Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to polynomial functions. If I can change the slide. There we go. The definition of a polynomial function, so it's going to look a lot scarier than it really is. We're going to let n be a non-negative integer. Non-negative just means that it can't be negative, so it could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, blah, 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 blah. Integer means that it's a whole number, uh, including 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to let a sub n, a sub n minus 1, blah, 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 a sub 2, a sub 1, a sub 0 be real numbers where a sub n is not equal to 0. So a polynomial, polynomial function is a function given by, and we can call it f of x or whatever we want to name our function, and we would say a sub n times x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 plus, and then however many more terms there are, plus a sub 2 times x squared, plus a sub 1 times x, or x to the first, which we usually don't include, and then times a sub 0. So that's what a polynomial function looks like, of, uh, a polynomial function of x with degree n. Now these look a lot scarier than they are. Remember anything that has an a, a sub n, a sub n minus 1, those are just numbers. So any type of real number, it could be 7, it could be a half, it could be negative 33. And then x is our variable, and then n, um, that's our what's called our degree, and that's a non-negative integer. So those just have to be some, somewhat normal numbers. So it could be 0, it could be 7, it could be 19. Um, it can't be something negative, and it can't be a decimal or fraction, or anything like that. On this slide, we're going to talk about some special types of polynomials. So there are some that are just used more frequently, and usually when we have more frequent things, we have special names for them. So the first one we're going to talk about is a monomial. Mono is a prefix that means one, and meal is a suffix that means number, and that's basically what it is. So a monomial is a polynomial, polynomial with one term. So it could just be f of x equals 17, or f of x equals x to the 42nd, or f of x equals 3x to the 18th. Okay, so that's monomial. Next we have a binomial. Bi is a prefix that means two, and nomial is a suffix that means number. So this would be a polynomial with two terms. With two terms. And lastly, the third other one that has a special name is a trinomial. Tri is a prefix that means three, so this is a polynomial with three terms. If we have any other type of polynomial, we would just say polynomial of degree, and then you would state the degree. The degree is just the largest exponent present in any single term. So if there's an x to the eighth, then we would say polynomial of degree eight. Okay, so here we're going to decide whether each equation is a polynomial equation or not. So remember the rules for a polynomial equation. A polynomial equation has to have real number coefficients, real number coefficients. Coefficients, those are the things that are in front of variable terms, and it would also have to have a real number constant. So real number coefficients, you can say constant. And uh, the degrees of each term, uh, excuse me, the exponent of each term is a non-negative integer. Okay, so looking at our first example, we have g of x, which is given by 3 over x plus 5x squared minus 8x plus 7. I see a lot of real numbers, so that's good. Is the exponent of each term non-negative? And you might say, well, yes, it is. But actually, this right here kind of ruins it, because notice that x is in the denominator. If we were to pull x up so that we didn't have a fraction here, this term would be 3 times x to the negative 1, and negative 1 is not non-negative, so this is not a polynomial function. The answer for A would be no. Letter B, h of x equals the square root of 2x minus 5x. We have real number coefficients. There's no constant, so good to go. The exponent of each term is non-negative. And again, we might be looking at it like, yeah, I don't see any issues, but there is an issue because we have this radical 2x, and if we actually want to remove the radical and write it as an exponent, it actually becomes 2x 
to the one half, and one half is not an integer. So we would say this one is not a polynomial equation. Letter C, R of T equals T squared minus 8T plus 1. So we have real number coefficients and constants. This would have a coefficient of 1, this would have a coefficient of negative 8, and this is a constant of 1. So that's good. Each The exponent of each term is a non-negative integer. So here the exponent is 2, here the exponent is 1, here the exponent of the variable would be 0 since there is no variable. Um, 2, 1, and 0 are all non-negative integers, so yes, we do have a polynomial function or equation. And in this case, it's a special one, right? It has three terms, so it's specifically a trinomial. Lastly, letter D, we have f of x equals 6. Uh, real number constant, so we can tick that box. Exponent of each term is a non-negative integer uh, of each, I should say, variable. This one doesn't have a variable. If we were to give it the variable x, it would be x to the 0, because the x to the 0 equals 1. Uh, 0 is non-negative, so this one looks good. And this one's also a special type of polynomial. It's called a monomial. Okay, so here we're going to talk about the characteristics of, any uh, of the graph of any polynomial. So there's certain things that they all have in common. For one, the domain is all reals. So one domain of any polynomial function is all reals. And to write that, I'm just going to use interval notation. It would be from negative infinity to infinity. So there's, we would say there's no restrictions on the domain. Something else about these graphs is that they uh, contain smooth curves. Uh, meaning, so just kind of like a subset of this, there's no sharp points. So if we've looked at absolute value functions already, um, an absolute value function has that sharp point at the vertex. That would not be an example of a polynomial because we can't have sharp points. Um, well, how did I do that? How come it wouldn't work earlier? Now all of a sudden it works. Um, it's continuous. Continuous just means there's no breaks or jumps in the graph. So no jumps, holes, or gaps. So the domain is all reals. There's smooth curves only. There's no sharp points and it's continuous, there's no jumps, holes, or gaps. I think that should be my characteristics. Let's look at the last slide. We're going to decide whether the graph is a graph of a polynomial function or not, so we're going to base it off the, these characteristics here. So in letter A, we have it here, and then it moves up here, and then it goes like that. That would not be a polynomial function because of the gaps, right? So to get from here up to here, you would have to take your pencil off the page, and we can't do that, so uh, for a polynomial function, we can't do that, so this would not be a polynomial function. Letter B looks good. I can draw the graph and not take my pen or pencil off the page. However, there is a sharp point here, and there's a sharp point here. And as we said, there can't be sharp points in polynomial functions, so this would also not be an example of a polynomial function. In letter C, okay, I can draw it and uh, without picking my pen or pencil up off the page. So that part's good, but it does have a sharp point right here. So this would also not be a polynomial function. Lastly, we have our graph here. I can draw it, it's continuous, so that's good. There's no sharp points, there's no breaks, jumps, or gaps. So finally, we see an example that is a polynomial function.